In this video, we're going to talk about the sampling distribution for proportions. Recently, we talked about the sample distribution for means. The central limit theorem tells us that if the sample size is large enough, typically by that we mean that n has to be at least 30, then the sample means follow a normal distribution regardless of what the original population looks like. So to state that formally, if x is a random variable with any distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, then x bar will be normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma over root n. That standard deviation for the sample statistic is called the standard error. Basically gives us an idea of how far away our statistics going to be uh, from the thing it's trying to estimate. Uh, and we can conclude a similar theorem for the sample proportion, uh, by which I mean the proportion of people in a sample that are going to have some property that we're interested in. So the central limit theorem for proportions says, let P be the proportion of some population that has some categorical property. In other words, some property that we're interested in seeing what proportion of the population has that property. Let capital P hat be the proportion of a sample size n from that population that have the same property. If n is sufficiently large, then P hat is also going to be normally distributed, centered at the true proportion with a standard error of the square root of P times one minus P over n. So what do we mean when we say sufficiently large? Sufficiently large means that there are at least 10 expected successes and 10 expected failures. Uh, by success, I mean observations that have the property. By failures, I mean observations that don't have the property. And this number of expected successes is n times p, and the number of expected failures is n times 1 minus p. So both of those numbers have to be at least 10 for the central limit theorem for proportions to work. Here's an example. According to the National Safety Council, 28% of all traffic crashes, that's 1.6 million traffic crashes per year, are due to drivers using cell phones. Suppose lawmakers take a sample of 200 accidents. We're going to find the sampling distribution for the proportion of accidents caused by cell phone usage in that sample of 200. And then we're going to decide whether or not the central limit theorem applies. So in this example, P, the true proportion of accidents caused by cell phones, is 0.28, and the sample size, N, is 200. All right, well, let's calculate the number of successes, which in this case refers to a crash caused by a cell phone. So that's going to be 0.28 times 200, which is 56. So that's more than 10. And then we're going to calculate the number of failures. Uh, we could do n times 1 minus p, or we can just realize that if 200, if we have 200 trials, 56 are caused by cell phones, then that means that the number that won't be caused by a cell phone is 144, because both of those numbers have to add up to 200. Uh, so the central limit theorem applies. All right. So the central limit theorem says that capital P hat, meaning the random variable that is the sample proportion, is going to be distributed normally with a center of 0.28, the true proportion, and a standard error of 0.28 times 0.72 all over 200. And we can calculate that that is 0.2. 0317. So remember, whenever we're asked what a distribution is, we're going to be describing a normal or a binomial distribution. So that's all we have to do here. What is the probability that a random sample of 200 accidents contains at least 60 accidents caused by cell phone usage? All right, so what we're really asking is what is the probability that our sample proportion is greater than whatever 60 out of 200 is. So figure out what 60 out of 200 is. That's just 0.3. So we're asking what is the probability that p hat is greater than 30 percent? Uh, so we know that these are normal, so we're going to have to get the z-score for this observation. The z-score is 0.3 minus 0.28, that's the mean. And since we're talking about the sample proportion, our standard deviation is 
zero three one seven. And it turns out that Z score is 0 0.6309. So here's our distribution of proportions. Our true proportion is 0.28. One standard deviation is going to be here. So this is wherever 0.3 is. So we're looking for this area, the area above that amount. So we use the normal CDF function. Our lower bound is 0 0.6309, and our upper bound is positive infinity, which we represent by 9999 on the calculator, or 1E99, just a, basically a gigantic uh, positive number. And that turns out to be 0 0.2641. Uh, considering that 16% of the data is past one standard deviation, 26% uh, makes sense here. Remember, we always try to use the empirical rule uh, to check our answers or approximate them before we calculate. Next, we're going to look at the sampling distribution for a sample of 300 accidents. So this time, since we're taking more accidents in our sample, we would expect the standard error to go down. In other words, our sample proportions are going to get closer to the true proportion. So p hat is going to again be normally distributed. This time the center is still 0.28 because that hasn't changed. What's going to change is the standard error. So that is still 0.28 times 0.72 but now we're going to divide by 300 under the square root instead of 200. And it turns out that that is 0 0.0259. In that sample of 300 accidents, what is the probability that at least 60 are caused by cell phones? So we can't just use 0.3 as our, as our um, sample proportion again, because 60 out of 300 is not 0.3, it's actually 0.2. So we have to keep that in mind that that proportion is actually lower. And it's going to be further away from the mean because the standard error has gotten smaller. So we're looking for the probability that our sample proportion is greater than 0.2, which is the probability that its z-score is greater than, well, let me get that z-score, 0.2 minus 0.28 divided by my new standard error, which is 0 0.0259. And that z-score is negative 3.0888. All right, so I'm looking for the probability that a z-score is above negative three. That's going to be virtually all samples are going to have a proportion higher than 0.2. Uh, so we do normal CDF. Negative 0.30888 to 9999. I always want to draw this picture, right? Even if I don't need to, it's always a good habit. So here's the mean. Here's one standard deviation, here's two, here's three. And so I'm a little bit beyond that. So really look at this, this is gonna be the entire normal curve here. So I should get an answer pretty close to 100%. Sure enough, I get 0.999 after I round. Finally, what is the probability that in a random sample of 300 accidents between 30% and 40% are caused by cell phone usage? So notice I'm given these percents outright. I don't have to calculate them from a number of accidents like I did in the last example. So I'm looking for the probability that p hat is between 0.3 and 0.4, which is the probability that z is between two numbers. This number is going to be 0.3 minus 0.28 over, remember we're doing 300 accidents, so that standard error is 0 0.0259. That z-score is 0.7722. So 
make my sevens look different in my twos. And then my other z-score is 0.4 minus 0.28 divided by 0 0.0259, which is 4.6332. Alright, so here's one right, negative one right here. One, two, three. So this is kind of all the way over here. So I'm looking for this area right here. Oh, just kidding. I shaded more than I needed to. Let's try that again. It's positive 0.7. So that's actually going to be right here. There we go. So that's the normal CDF of 0.7722 comma 4.6332. And the area that gives us is when we round 22%.